Well, hello, hello, everyone. I just, just decided to come into the bush today, do a quick little pop-up, and show you this new shelter that I put together. I learned it from another content creator their channel is really big monkey one. Hey Penny Prepper, how are you? And you are the first one. Dan H, man, it's always good to see you. Dan, I am in the bush. A hey, cruising, fine, good to see you. Vision, good to see you, man. Yeah, guys, I am out here in the bush. And I finally got able to make it in the bush in the rain. Hey Bougie, how you doing? Marco. You guys, thanks for dropping in. Prepared Irishman. Great to see you, my man. Great to see you. Great to see you, Bougie, as well. So, guys, I want you guys to be the first ones to see this shelter that I uh, put up, uh, that I learned from another person. But this shelter is made from three... 9 by 12 tarps. It consists of two uh, lean twos with a 9 by 12 over that. So I'm going to step out into the rain really quick and show you guys exact. Well, let me just show you from here. You can see, I hope you see where the water is going uh, off one of the uh, lean twos. But also on the inside, I have all these carabinas to hold lights. Just small things, you know, first aid kit, my mask to my hatchet. But um, I came to this area yesterday and uh, I decided this would be a perfect location. But I'm going to step out. The rain is somewhat stopping, but here you can see it's a very, very large shelter. Here's one lean to. Here is the other lean to. And then there's a 9 by 12 tarp on top. Now, the one on top can be used as a rain catchment system. But what I'm going to do is go back in here because I don't want to be in the rain. So, but uh, yeah, now the good thing about this shelter, I can actually stand up in it and look out. So this is something I've been wanting to do for a long time and uh, it finally happened. But uh, yeah, guys, I'm just out here practicing again thinking of all the shelters that I want to build. Uh, I want to do this one again. I'm not going to be out here all night, but uh, I'm going to do be in this one one night. I'm going to uh, make this shelter. Now this shelter, I was thinking, hey, yeah, it could hold six people easily. I'm really thinking if you look at it, that's one side of it. Here is another side. I'm sure eight people could fit in here easily. And of course, you can have a fire inside. That's my little uh, twig stove that I had some uh, lunch with, lunch. And I had, I'm letting my dishes get wet, some uh, mashed potatoes. So, and now I'm just drinking some coffee. But the good thing about this shelter, uh, the good thing about this shelter is that, uh, Penny, okay, we're sitting by, oh, that I didn't mean to do, Penny. I did not mean to uh, hide him away. Yep, coffee for sure. But uh, yeah, but Penny, um, yeah, I'm not sure what happened. I'm, Accidentally, it says, 
Penny Pepper was hidden by the Virginia bushcrafter, which was an accident. But the thing about this shelter, if you see my shoulders here and here, and then my head's here. So I always can get fresh air. The rain won't bother me or anything like that. So, okay, great. I'm glad he was unhidden. Thank you, Bougie Prepper. Yeah, I'm always hitting the wrong button or something, but yeah, uh, I knew it was going to rain. I didn't find out until I was on my way here, but I said, you know what? I'm halfway here, so I'm just going to go anywhere. And if it rains, it rains. But I think what I'm going to do, uh, maybe around, I'm not sure, a couple of hours, I'm going to do some squirrel hunting out here. I did some yesterday and did not see any squirrels whatsoever. Hey, Outdoor Addiction, how are you, man? Hey, Sister Marie, good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah, I'm glad to see all you guys, man. You know, uh, you know, my thing is just getting out in the bush because I've been wanting to do this shelter for a long time. But, um, you know, I studied it and I studied it and I studied it. And when you try something the first time, you're going to always have some problems. So I did not build it exactly like Really Big Monkey did, but... Well, I didn't use the uh, knots that he used, but it actually has three ridge lines, you know. One ridge line for one lean two, another ridge line for the other lean two, and then a ridge line for the tarp that goes over both of the lean twos. So it's pretty cool, you know. Uh, that's one thing that's off my bucket list. But, you know, I just keep finding out there are just so many shelters that I want to try out. You know, there's so much... And uh, bushcrafting, I'm uh, I'm really looking forward to making a uh, hammock bed. I did one last June 19th, but this time I am going to be using contractor bags uh, to uh, make my hammock instead of rope. And what I want to do is improve upon what I did last June 19th. So. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. So today I'm trying to, like say, get some practicing in and, um, you know, do some squirrel hunting later on. Um, you know, and yesterday I was out here. I was able to uh, use knowledge as a basis and then put your own spin on it. Yeah, you have to do what will work for you and make things easier. That's so true, Dan. Uh, yeah, because I, I tried to do it exactly like uh, Dave did. And I just couldn't, you know. I spent a lot of time trying to do that. I said, well, you know what? As long as I have the three knots, uh, the three ridge lines, I'm fine. But yesterday I was out here after I finished squirrel hunting. I was practicing with my compass. And um, what's so strange is that I still bring my GPS system. And I knew it. the batteries were good. The batteries usually, usually last for like three months. I got out here. I had one bar. So I set my, I got my bearings, asmix or whatever it's called, and I just went out. Hey, Urban Garden Chronicles, how are you? How are you, Dynamite? Thank you guys for dropping in. But uh, I took my compass and I just said, you know, I'm just gonna go. And I probably went out maybe three, 350 yards. And uh, I was, hey, ex New York uh, NYC prepper, how you doing, man? Good to see you. So I went out. Uh, maybe 300, 350 yards, and um, came back using my compass. I keep saying, like, that's all there is to it. So, but I want to get to the point that I can use the compass along with the map, and I'm going to use the ranger beads that uh, Dan H. gifted to me. I've been reading them and studying them, and, you know, everything's in meters, but I think I'm going to go to a football field and... See how many paces I have per um, 100 yards. So, as they say in bushcrafting, there is always, always something to learn. You know, they always say something to buy, something to do, something to learn. I think I'm finished buying. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty good using the compass yesterday. And, uh, you know, I'm glad I was able to make this shelter. And I'm looking forward to... Uh, spend it coming out here and spend the night uh, in this shelter again this is I'm using 9 by 12 tarps I know 
almost eight people could fit in here. And the good thing about it when I stand up, it's so refreshing uh, because down below, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, a little warm, but I can even build a little fire in here. You know, I had, I, I used a little, uh, uh, what is this stove called? The, uh, my little firebox. I used that, but um, I know I can put a little fire in here at night. I hope you guys can hear me because the rain is just hitting the tarp and everything. But uh, yeah, guys, you know, this is, uh, if I could get out in the bush every single day, believe me, I would, you know. I'm already, hey, fed up. How you doing, man? It's good to see all you wonderful people. Yeah, um, if I could get out in the bush every, every day, believe me, I'd be here. You know, I'm still uh, thinking about the uh, the great time I had in Ohio. That, I, some of the greatest, man, that was, it was just a lot of fun. And I'm already looking forward to the next one, you know. So, uh, but yeah, it was meeting some great, great people. I think, you know, when I started doing this bushcrafting, that I just didn't, hey, uh, Maurice Evans, how are you? Uh, I, I didn't know, you know, how people, how you are going to accept people, how people would accept you. They're almost, you know, people are going to think, oh, that guy's a fear monger or, but you know what, I found it to be just the opposite. Hey, Penny, I'm, I'm glad you're back in, man. That was an accident, you know. But uh, lightweight tarps are thinner and may not be as sturdy. Yeah, these are pretty, these are very, very thick. I bought these when I first started bushcrafting. Um, and yet they're very, very thick. And I kept saying, I don't have a use for them because they're so thick. But um, when I saw Dave on Really uh, Big Monkey 1, I said, those tops will serve me very well to make that shelter. I've been wanting to make this, this shelter for so long, you know. But the rain is, I don't know if it's, is it stopping? You know, the rain is, it's on and off, on and off. You know, but yeah, I want to see if I could, let you see this from a distance. Yeah, so I'm thinking, you know, that could also be a good uh, rain catchment system as well. So, yeah, I'm thinking, yeah, the rain's gonna stop, squirrels are gonna come out. So I'll get me uh, some squirrel hunting in as well. Uh, I do know some people that they actually eat the squirrels, so if I get some, I'm gonna take it to them, you know? But, uh, wow, this is a beautiful day out here. Yeah, you're right, if it's not raining, you know. <laughs> yeah, if it ain't raining, we ain't training. That's uh, Corporal's Corner uh, saying. But you know what's so strange when I was out here yesterday? I mean, you could hear the squirrels barking, and I'm sitting here listening. It's like, I hear them over there. And I go and take a couple of steps. I go and take a few more steps. I get up, I don't hear anything. I use my little... Bark call, nothing, you know. And I was out here a long time. After I, when I got home, I was exhausted. But uh, you know, that's that's hunting is a uh, it's it's a fantastic sport, you know. I really do like it, you know. But um, yeah, let me head back in here. Yeah, I think the rain is hope it. Yeah, the rain is going to stop. So yeah, I'll be here for a while, you know. But um, a motto of the United States Marine Corps. That's right. Okay. Um, yeah, guys. But, um, you know, this is all my gear. I brought it all in because it was raining, you know. And, of course, you guys know that I just have to have my tools. My S-wing hatchet. My condor. Uh, this is called a condor um, mountain pass knife. Uh, I like this knife. Uh, my little knife that I made some uh, split a little wood with. And I brought my little, my saw, not my huge saw. Brought this one. And uh, my shovel to clean out, you know, do some cleaning around here. I really didn't need it, but those are some of the tools that I'm just not comfortable being out here without those. You know, I always have to have a backup knife, a large knife and a small knife in case I want to do, do some carving or something. Hey, Dala, D uh, Delia, how are you doing? It's good to see you. 
Yeah, I always want to bring a, a spare knife, you know. But, um, wow, man, look at the sun. It's really coming out. The rain is stopping. Do you guys hear what I hear? When you start hearing the birds and everything, that's like a good sign for the squirrels to come out. But I'm, I'm going to wait a little while longer, you know. But, um, yeah, I notice when, I, when I'm down below the tarps, it's very, very warm. And, but when I stand up, it's much, much cooler. Yeah, it's much, much cooler when I stand up. But uh, yeah, I'm, of course, my coffee here. Think about coffee. And this is my uh, uh, survival living coffee that I got from the uh, bug out weekend. Yeah, uh, no honey season here until October in New York. Wow, really? Yeah, see in Virginia, we have honey season until June the 16th, which is squirrels. And then after that, there's no more hunting until November, which will be muzzleloader season for two weeks, then rifle season. We'll have deer season and bear season until January the 5th. But uh, I'll miss some, I'll miss the end of December, I think. Um, I'm always headed home for Christmas and, you know, being with the family and so forth. But uh, so, guys, any of you guys out there doing any bushcrafting? Man, I'm going to tell you, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Oh, uh, oh you drink the, uh, okay, in your, oh, you had in your coffee daily. Okay, you drink it. Okay, yeah. I'm, okay, I drink Newton Survival Coffee daily. Okay, good, good. Awesome times. Can't wait for the next one. Same here. You forgot both seasons. You know what? I don't do both seasons. I mean, I don't do both. And let me tell you why I don't do bow. I want to do bow, but I'm going to tell you why I don't. I'm not ready to drop the money for it. When you see the price of the broadheads and the price of a good compound bow or a, um, what is the other one? Uh, not the compound and the, the cross is a, oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Uh, hey, Arkansas wild man. Um, it's not a, is it a crossbow? Yeah, a crossbow. And you know, of course, you you really gotta practice with that. You know, you just can't buy it and go out into the into the woods and start hunting, you know. Uh, you're pretending to be the bushcrafter when I am outside, uh them outside taking care of the hens. Man, it's hard when it's raining like today and and the tarps failed me. Oh man, the tarps failed you? Sorry to hear that. Yeah, working on it. okay. Next year I will be four day. It will be four day. Yeah, you know what? This is what I tell people. Always expect the unexpected when you go into the bush. I mean, think like today something that was so. so I've been studying how to do this talk for over a year, and I had the hardest time trying to use the knots that I saw someone else use. So I had to just revert back to the knots that I, that I always use. But nevertheless, uh, the shelter got built. I'm glad I did it. I'm looking forward to spending the night in it. I need to go back to my other location and check on my uh, A-frame debris shelter. I won't be able to do that today. I'm looking forward to making a hammock using contractor bags last time i used ropes so i'm always looking to modify something and there are so many configurations with tarps it's, it's really it's amazing it's amazing of the configurations that you can make with a tarp but they all take studying you know um i don't know i've had people just tell me you know you just go out there and do this and do that and do that and it's just not true but, um, hey, Carbon Q, how are you doing? Good to see you. Yeah, you know, it's, um, this weather's so strange. It rains and then it's hot. But um, I'm thinking after it rains, it should be cool. And maybe I can have some luck, you know. But, um, yeah, I was, I was, it was so nice yesterday. Uh, I was out there hunting. And um, 
I took my little pad, I leaned up against a tree, and I must have slept for about 15 or 20 minutes. And I'm saying, you know, that's not the thing you're supposed to do when you're hunting, you know. Uh, but I only heard maybe two shotguns, the whole shotgun shots, the whole day yesterday. So the only the only squirrels I saw were the squirrels on the, in the on the road when I was coming here. But uh, yeah, it's just it's a challenge. It's just a challenge for me, uh, man. I love I love hunting, fishing. I haven't been able to, I haven't been able to do that lately. Because right now I'm concentrating on the uh, bushcrafting. Because, I mean, there, there's so much to learn in bushcrafting, you know. Um, I'm still thinking about all the things from the bug out weekend, all the great information I received from individuals. Uh, I'm really looking forward to learning how to use that bowfang. Um, I was looking at it last night, reading instructions, and I just told someone I know not absolutely nothing about a two-way radio, ham radio, but believe me, I'm going to learn uh, because I'm just thinking now how beneficial uh, that two-way radio will be. Uh, put some chunky peanut butter on some trees in the area. Yeah, you know, I would do that, but they will get you for baiting, you know, and I, I'm always like, I want to get my stuff fair and square, but you know what? Sometimes, I mean, you know, I, I, you know, you, you know how you have all that that seasoning from uh, ramen noodles. I take it and I save it, and I kept saying, um, I'm going to use it for deer hunting, you know, but I never did, I, and I just kept saying, no, it would be my luck for the game warden to see me do that. But yeah, I heard peanut butter is really good. Yeah, I heard it's really good, but. Um, yeah, man, you know, I wish I wish some of you guys were out here in the bush with me, you know. Uh, now it stopped raining. I think I can step out here. Uh, ooh, it feels good out here. But it's still raining. Yeah, I had my, um, I had my bag here uh, hanging and I took it in. Even though my bag is waterproof, I just didn't want to take a chance. But and I think what I'll do next time, you see where the little dip is? I'm going to fix that to specifically be a water catchment system. Yeah, I mean, it's just so many things I can think. I mean, you can see here how you would never get wet. I don't know, here's if you can see it from here as well. Yeah, you'd never get wet. But um, yeah, it really feels good out here now. But yeah, I was all, all back in that stuff yesterday. And just, you know, just walking slowly. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm walking with trying to do heel to the side foot and roll to the ball of your feet, you know, trying to walk as quietly as possible. But you know, animals really can, they can hear you. They can sense when you are around. Uh, they see you before you see them. But I mean, if you look up there, there has to be some squirrels somewhere. I don't hear any of them barking right now. I just hear some birds, but, and I see, feel the rain coming back. So, yeah, back in the, sh I don't want to melt. <laughs> but, yeah, man, uh, I would say, yeah, guys, if you get the chance, hey, get out there in the bush man it's just it's just a um peaceful thing you know it's peaceful but i realized the thing about bushcrafting is it's a time constriction you know there's work or there's always other things to do and um yesterday i almost didn't make it out but it's like no i'm going i'm going i'm getting out you know um i'm definitely getting out uh, to do some squirrel hunting, and uh, so I was able to, but uh, but also, guys, you know, I have these lights here because when I got here this morning and got in this shelter, it's like it's really dark, you know. That's something I had did not anticipate, and I started to leave my lights at home. I said, I'm not going to be out there to the dark, but that goes to show you that 
Hey, one of the C's is candles, which means lights, you know? So I have um, lights, another light, a headlamp, and of course, batteries as well. So I use some dry bags inside your pack. Okay, extra protection against the rain. Yeah, you know, I have some, but what? Oh yeah, dry bags. Yeah, I have, I have one, my food's in this dry bag, and then I have two plastic bags. Um, but I filled the plastic bags with leaves because uh, I just wanted to see uh, how it would feel, even though I've done that before. But uh, yeah, the dry bags, that, that's a good idea, you know, because I have another rucksack at home. It's a Molly 2, and it's already just empty. It's like eight and a half pounds. Can you imagine if that thing got wet? Because it's not water resistant, but when I use it, I always have uh, plastic, I keep my, my uh, gear in plastic bags. Yeah, I keep my gear in plastic bags in the event that it rains. But I've been, this is the, no, this is maybe the second time I've been out in the bush and it actually rained. And, uh, you know, what I really want to do one day is be get out into the bush and have a tarp and try to keep that fire going while, while it is raining. So, um... Yeah, that's something, but today I just wanted to take my little firebox out and uh, use that because my main objective was to uh, make this shelter. That's like one notch off my off me now, but so I'm looking forward to uh, get out here one night because my routine is to get out in the bush on a Saturday or Sunday one week, the next week a Saturday or Sunday, the next week do an overnighter. And the fourth week is just a rest week or study or, you know, bike ride or something like that. So, um, and then, you know, there's always family. So you can always plan and plan, but there's always something that's going to come in, you know. Uh, we have to get out in the bush with V. Okay. You know, what? I, I, you know, I, I'm waiting to, you know, I was so glad when I was at uh, Visions uh, Meetup. That was Sister Marie, uh, fed up, American, his wife, his son. And, I, you know, the good, I was really looking to see how many females are here. And I was surprised that there's, there's a fair amount of females out there. So I think it's, you know, I mean, I don't think you will learn this in a classroom. Well, you may learn it in a classroom, but you have to practice it in the bush. And like I said, I was going over this thing over and over in my mind over it, over it, I came out here and had the toughest times with the knots. So that tells me, you know, I usually, I usually use the same knots over and over and over. So that tells me I've got to go back home and practice those knots. But, uh, you know, everyone have their own special knots that work for them. So, um, yeah, but, you know, I was able, you know, my, my objective was to just get this out here and the thing about it, I didn't have to come too far. I didn't want to come too far. I mean, these tarps are heavy. And had I put everything in my bag, like I didn't put as much water, I know I would have been rocking maybe 40, anywhere, but maybe 50 pounds. And I just wasn't up to doing 50 pounds today, you know. I think when I came out here today, I think my rucksack is like 40 pounds. You know, that's manageable. And I'm only... Maybe 150 yards, 160 yards from a vehicle, you know. So that's that's a good ex some good exercise right there, you know. So um, okay, yeah, I see. Okay, yeah, um, Kanaja. Yeah, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, but uh, yeah, thanks for dropping in. Working, pay, and taxes. Oh, don't mention that. You know, I, I read something. They said your first three months, January, February, and March, <laughs> is really to pay taxes. Well, if that is the case, why am I still paying taxes? You know, I'm always trying to get the write-offs, and but taxes, man, it's something. But I have something I'm going to, uh, something I'm going to try, and I got it from the uh, bug out weekend uh, uh, last week, so. I'm going to do something to circumvent paying so many, so much of 
you know, sent paying taxes. You know, I mean, gosh, man, just think, you know, but yeah, I can understand paying taxes because... You know, we got to pay for the roads. We got to pay for our education. We we want a good school system. We want a good fire department, police department. You know, we just want our money to be justified, you know. Uh, property taxes. I mean, yeah, I mean, even for this wildlife management area that I'm in right now, my county, I mean, it, well, this is not my county, but this is Farkid County. So they're paying taxes and um, for other people to use it. But, you know, just as a citizen of Virginia, I'm, I know I'm paying in some form or fashion. I'm paying taxes for this. So, but, um, yeah, that's something we, we won't get around ever. You know, I mean, I know I don't expect to. I won't. I, w I wish I could, but I don't know. But, yeah, now, isn't it strange now here? I don't hear any rain. None whatsoever. I don't hear any rain now. I don't see any rain. But it should be cool around, I guess, I don't know, maybe four or five. It should be a lot cooler. And maybe the squirrels will be out then. Yeah, I actually, uh, my son, uh, his relatives, they actually eat the squirrels. I mean, they look forward to it. Um, so that's what I'll do. And then they, uh, I, that his aunt, she looks forward to all the fish that I catch. So I was down, what day? I think I was with them Memorial Day. And that's the first thing she was asking was like, where's her fish? So, but I like to do night fishing, you know. Uh, I will go fishing about 7 p.m. and fishing to about 9 the next morning, you know. Uh, what are you hunting with the sh No, actually, I am using a 12-gauge shotgun, but with number six shots, specifically for squirrels. I'm not using double odds or triple odds, anything like that. I'm using number six shots out of a 12-gauge, 28-inch barrel, Mossberg 500. So, uh, you know, I've tried, you know, I the, with the 22... The squirrels just move too much. I mean, as soon as I see squirrels, they, they run behind the tree. But I have to catch them going from tree, branch to branch or something like that. Um, I tried with a 22 last year. No luck whatsoever. I tried twice. No luck, you know. But um, so I'm going to be using a shotgun uh, with uh, number six shots. So I figure, you know what? I'm just going to, I think, I think hunting time is over maybe by 6 or 6, 6 or 6.30. So after that, then I'll, I'll break this stuff down. I know it'll be dark and everything. I'll break it down and then, you know, just, just head on in after that, you know. But, um, okay, let's see. Uh, Arkansas survival fish, 3 a.m., caught seven catfish. Wow, that's good. Oh, they have ammo for squirrels. Yeah, they do have ammo. And, and you know, it's called, for, for squirrels, you use number six shots or, or seven and a half, or you can use eight shot. So those are more or less like, they, those are, you know, so you just want obliterate, <laughs> I can't even talk, uh, the squirrel, you know. But, yeah, you definitely do not want to use double odd or triple odd on a squirrel. You will not have anything left, you know. Yep. Uh, nice. Uh, you have two Mossbergs? Wow, that's great. Yeah. Uh, the one that I have with me today, it is a 28-inch smooth board, but I can take that barrel off and put a rifle barrel on and, uh, use Sabbath slugs and, uh, hunt deer with that, you know. You don't want to be, uh, sp uh, spitting lead. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you know, that's what, um, a lot of people say, you know, using... You know, why don't you use a 22? You know what? I have not seen, well, I take the back. I saw one guy get a squirrel. I think he was using a 17, a 17 HMR or something like that. And it just really, it just did the squirrel in. But, uh, yeah, with a 22, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, 
Eli is in the Mossberg. Yeah, a, a vision. I got it, Eli. Your Eli has a sister. I love that thing. That, oh man, that thing is just so awesome. 410 is good too. Yeah, 410 is good as well. I hunt them on my property with a 25 caliber pellet rifle. Yeah, those, you know what? I was surprised when I saw those. Those things can be very, very pricey as well, you know? But, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever get one. But I, I was looking into them, and they are very, very pricey. Yeah, the 25 caliber uh, pellet gun. Yeah, uh, gave me some and some cool pew pews for, oh, yeah. Hey, Vision, you know what? Those are some very, very cool ones, man. But um, if, you are, if you guys ever get a chance, check out Brennicky Black Magic Magnums, 3-inch hard cast 605 grain those are for buffaloes just be aware when you're at the range and you put it on your shoulder be aware of what's in there but yeah brennicky black magic magnum three inch you can get them in two and a quarter two and three quarters inches or is it two and a half or whatever two and a half but i have the three inch man those are for buffaloes or tigers you know but um yeah, I don't hunt deer with those. There wouldn't, wouldn't be anything left, you know. I, I, oh, here comes the rain again. Those are for, like, bears and so forth. You know, is it going to rain? Is it going to stop? It starts, it stops and starts, you know. But, uh, yeah, man, I, I mean, uh, they have so many different type of rounds. Brennan makes some um, titanium rounds. Oh, I didn't know that. I did not know that. Yeah, Brennicke, man, that's like, yeah, and they Brennicke also have some that are called knockout. Those are two and three quarters as well, and they're hard cats. Um, those are like my favorite, you know, favorite. But um, uh, isn't that a song? Here comes the rain again. I think that is a song. But you know, j now the thing about it, I'm standing out here. I don't know, maybe when the wind blows. A lot of the rain is, is coming from the trees. But right now it's like, man, this is just so perfect, you know. I just wanted to get a little cooler, closer to darkness. Um, before, and, and I want what I just heard, the birds. It seemed like when the birds are, birds are out, that's when the squirrels come out, you know. So, hey, Daryl, how you doing, man? 3T prepping and gardening, how are you? Yeah, if I missed any of you guys, hey, thank you for coming in, man. I just wanted to uh, share some of my experience with you guys, man. I mean, I'm really, I really enjoyed putting this shelter together. And it just makes me want to put more. But now I'm really looking forward to doing the, the uh, hammock again with contractor bags. I think that's, man... You know, everyone says the uh, hammock is such good sleeping, and it is. I've only slept in a hammock one time, and that's the one that I made. And it was last, it was June 19th, so I said, here it is a year, and I haven't done it again. So that's on my list to do that again. But this time, every time I do so, I want to do it again, but I want to improve upon it and, and do something a little different. Yeah, I think what's happening when the... Wind blows, that's uh, rain coming out of the trees, you know. But they said we were supposed to get some rain until 7 p.m., so I don't know if I'll get to hunt or not, you know. I mean, it, the sun can be shining one minute, and then there can be a downpour the very next minute, so I don't know. Yeah, I don't know, but uh, rain sounds awesome. Yeah, it does. Man, you know, I love, when it rains, I, that is, I can sleep so well, you know. I mean, sometimes if I'm on the highway and it starts to rain, I would go to the next truck stop or rest area and just sit there and enjoy hearing the rain. I mean, that the rain is so soothing, so soothing, you know. Yeah, Carbon, how are you doing, Carbon? Yeah, Carbon, you uh, I know what you're you're going through that big move, man. You know, moving is stressful, but um. Hey, I'm, you know, I'm wishing you all the best in your new home, Tennessee. You know, there's, there's, um, 
lots of mountains in Tennessee. Lots of mountain mountains, you know. If I was in Tennessee, I know I'd be in those mountains hunting or doing something. But uh, yeah, Carbon, if you hunt or anything like that, you would not have a problem in Tennessee, any part of Tennessee. You know, I go through Tennessee a couple of times a year and some beautiful mountains, beautiful mountains. And you know, last week when I was coming from uh, Ohio, I went through West Virginia. They have some beautiful mountains as well. I mean, beautiful mountains. But um, yeah, you know, I mean, up and down, S-turns and everything, you know, it's like, that's one highway, I think I was on uh, 64, 64, yeah, I took 64 West and 64 East coming back. Yeah, those roads will definitely keep you awake, you know, because there's so much turning and so forth. Uh, prepping and gardening, yes. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you are excited, you know. Yeah, you're uh, moving closer to the south, okay. Yeah, yeah, moving is so stressful. Gosh, I remember the last time I moved, man. It took me so long because I did not want to pay a moving company. I would put stuff in my vehicle and, and uh, one day, take it to the new place, sleep. I did that for a while, you know, but hey, it got it got done. And, you know, I probably should have paid the movers anyway as, you know, considering my time and gasoline and all that good stuff. You know, yep, never ending, never ending. But, uh, but you know, you're moving, that's a step up, step forward, something better to look, uh, something better, to, you know, something you're looking forward to. Uh, change is always good, you know. Especially if it's if it's uh, on your terms, you know, you're doing it because you want to and not because you have to and so forth, you know, but um, yeah, but um, yeah, I'm out here enjoying myself, you know. Yeah, did you guys hear the birds? Man. Yeah, those are birds, no squirrels. And the thing about where I am now. There is so much dead wood. I mean, I mean, there's just wood everywhere. I would not have any, I mean, when I made my little, uh, uh, use my little firebox, all I did was just take wood from this little pile right here. And I still have wood left over, you know, that, you know me, I'm always getting more wood than I really need, you know. But that's me, you know, that's just part of bushcrafting, having more wood than you anticipate. Um, to me, it's, I use it as fuel. I, it, I didn't make it to the meat, but next time I'll be ready. Yeah, Carmen, you got to check it out. You got, and the thing about it, it's going to be uh, four days next year. So I'm telling everyone now, whatever day it's on, I will be there the day before. That's right. I will be there the day before. So, yeah, I got there the day before this time, you know. But, um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was so much fun. And again, you know what, I, I, I think one of the most... Uh, enjoyable moments were the classes, you know, the calm class, you know, the radio uh, done by the uh, prepared Irish, Irishman and um, the night, the defense class given by Mad Shad and then the um, first aid given by um, uh, um, Vision. Excellent. Uh, Hutt, uh, Mike from Hudson Valley did the bug out bag, you know. I mean, a lot of great information, lot, and um, and I know the prepared Irishman. He was going to give some more classes on tarps, so um, I went online, uh, went on YouTube last night to watch him him do a. I think it, it's a rapid deployment. So if you guys get a chance, go over there and check check him out, uh, the prepared Irishman. So um, yeah, but I think he's the expert in in, in the. Uh, a two-way radio and so forth. So, you know, before I really didn't think much about, you know, the two-way radio, 
But after I was, I won that one at the bug out, it's like now I'm really compelled to learn how to use that. You know, if I look at the benefits of it, yeah, you know, because, you know, all my family's in Texas and none of them are aware of all this stuff, but at least I would, you know, I would make an attempt to contact someone that can contact them. So that's what really, uh, when it comes to tarps and radios, Irishman is good. Yeah, I'm, yeah, he is. Um, yeah, uh, I did some sub. Oh, you did sub to his channel. Okay, yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I was watching him last night. And um, yeah, he, he, he did the uh, rapid deployment. Um, and the thing about when he was, he did a, um, at the, the, it's called a plow, plow point. You know, most individuals, including myself, we use, um, what is it, uh, tent, I mean, um, walking sticks. Well, the prepared Irishman actually used a stick from the uh, forest floor. And then he put this uh, bandana around it. So now that's how it's really, really done. Um, I mean, you know, I mean, if you're going to be out in the bush, you're not going to find a walking stick. I mean, a manufactured walking stick in the woods, you know. But uh, he actually went out there, uh, broke a limb, saw it, or whatever he did, and uh, used that. But it was, it was, and I saw the one that he put together at the uh, bug out uh, weekend. It was really, really nice, you know. Plow point, yeah. I did one in my backyard. Um, you know, I wish my backyard wasn't really large enough, but so I'm gonna do that one out in the bush as well as do the Adirondack, do that one again, a little different. Uh, but you can actually, you can take a tarp and become fully enclosed in the tarp. And, um, and now, you know, the thing is like, I, I used to always say, you know, I won't do a tent, I won't do a tent. Well, excuse me, bucks going to my mouth. Thing about it though, you just have to adapt to the situation. And I think the tent was perfect for the bug out weekend, you know. I mean, I slept good both nights, you know. I mean, it felt safe. You know, it was it was it was just awesome. So uh, I had to resub to Arkansas Wildman. Okay, this message is held for review. Okay, eight grace. Hello, host and everyone. Yeah, yeah. I'm just um, just out here. I said, you know, I really wanted to show you guys first this, you know, and also a nut, something else I'm working on is the first aid kit. So I have one hanging up here. So if anything were to happen, or if I was with someone else and they were here, we know exactly where the first aid kit is, you know? But um, I was going, I have like three first aid uh, kits now, so I really need to combine them. Uh, a lot of them, you know, they're duplicate things. So, you know, but I'll just keep one in each vehicle, uh, which would be the smart thing to do, you know? Yep. Um, hello, hope you're doing well. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, um, Grace. Thanks for dropping in. Yeah, man. I appreciate all you guys' support, man. I, I really do. I just wish you guys were out here with me. You know what? I'm telling you, you guys, you just got to go out there and get in the bush. I'm telling you, one, when you do it one time or two times, you know, there's always, there's always that, honestly, to me, I think there's always a fear, you know, but you know, you, you get over that, but you still are aware, you know, one thing that I'm going to do on my next overnighter, I'm going to build a 360 perimeter security uh, system, uh, you know, because honestly, when I'm in the bush, I sleep very, very little, you know, but um, I think what I'll do just Next time, I just get larger, larger logs so I don't have to get up so frequently. Uh, but still, especially for me, when I'm out there by myself, I'm always aware. You know, you, you know I, I, I always have a light on the outside of my shelter. But, uh, you know, when you're out there, you, you, you think, wow, you know, if I had to call someone, they may be able to come to the kiosk, but they're not coming out here in the bush where I am. There's no way, you know, but um, but once you're out there and you have your fire going and you have some lights, 
you know, I don't think you'd have a problem with wildlife or anything like that. You know, they don't want to be around you, and of course, you don't want you don't want them to be around you. So, but uh, hey, Jason from Virginia, how you doing, man? Good to see you. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm just uh, Jason out here practicing, trying something new, man. Always trying something new. You know, that's why I say my channel is about learning and practicing. And it's a journey. It's a journey. I, I know I'll never learn it all. But I'm, I'm to the point now I'm even thinking about uh, taking... Uh, class, intermediate, and an advanced class. And I, I've heard the advanced class is really tough as well as the intermediate. But even though I've been doing this a little over a year, I think I would start off with the basic, you know, basics again, you know, because you can always learn something. Yep. Muted. Uh, there you go. Okay. Um, I'm... Oh, you're doing garden, garden ATM. Okay. Gar okay. Yeah, but... Um, yeah, guys, I'm just uh, right now just relaxing. Uh, okay. Yeah, I don't know what is, I don't know, maybe it's the weather, and maybe where I am, reception or something like that, but I see we're back five by five. Yeah, okay. Oh, you know, I, when it was muted, I think it's because I saw on my screen there was a call that was coming in, and it was a, uh, I get these telemarketers that just call all the time, so I blocked these numbers, and I think that may have been what caused the, uh, caused me to be muted. Yeah, that probably was it. So, but yeah, you know, I, you guys get the same thing. I mean, I get calls all the time. I block the number, block the number. And sometimes, you know what I'll do? I just let them call and won't reply. And then I just dial the number back from a different phone. It's like, yep, it's a telemarketer. That's all it was, you know? But, uh, Emergency setup is one thing, but when enjoying the outdoors, comfort is king. Yeah, you know, but I do this in the event that I have to do an emergency, you know. If it's, if it's an emergency, I'm just throwing a lean-to up, and that's it, you know, really quick, you know. Because a lean-to will keep you dry, uh, or an anirondic, you know, th you can do those really quick. But this one really took me some time. You know, once I decided I'm just going to use my own knots, then it went, it went much faster. But, um... Uh, yeah, I've, I've still got to learn the knots, man. I, I don't know them that well. I just know enough to uh, do what I have to do. So, yeah, but uh, basic is not easy. Yep, the you're right, uh, Irishman. Um, emergency, outdoors, confidence king. Uh, bingo. Yep, don't forget to sit this. Yeah, man, guys, hit that, hit that thumbs up. I definitely appreciate it. But, yeah, uh, prepared Irishman, you'll be hearing from me, and I just got to get over this. Fear. We're not a fear. It's like, oh man, I got to learn how to use this radio, you know. So I know I'm going to be having some questions for you. That's for sure, you know. And I know I'm going to take a class and all of that good stuff. But it's always good to get the advice or the opinion, or you know, remain being a student. Uh, and you'll always learn, you know. Always learn. It's like, I mean, this past weekend, I mean, I learned so much from the prepared Irishman. Dan H, Ghost Link, Vision, oh man, I mean, even um, uh, XNYC, I mean, just watching the classes and so forth, you know, it was one, wow, what was that? You know, it's so strange when you hear trees rubbing together. I thought I was used to that, but anyway, but uh, some of the things they did in the class, like, you know what, you never thought about that, never thought about that, you know, but... I guess that's why it's called a class. That's why it's called learning. So, yep. But guys, I just wanted to uh, show you the shelter. And uh, of course, there's going to be a video on it. And I'm just going to sit and chill out. And I'm going to walk down in this area. Since I hear all the birds. And just see if I can get lucky to get a squirrel and take it to my son's aunt and so forth. So guys, I'm gonna head on out 
hit that thumbs up on your way out. I appreciate, appreciate you guys coming in. And I'm going to see all of you on the next video or the next live or in the chat. So take care. I appreciate you guys dropping in. Coffee first. See ya. Bye, everyone.